welcome to another Tech Bytes video. I'm Mark from AMX, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Muse Automator to program a few simple tasks using a Muse controller. The Automator program was created by AMX to streamline the use of Node-RED as a programming environment for our new line of Muse controllers. The Muse Automator software is available for download on the AMX website. Look under Products, Configuration and Management Software, and then Muse Automator. I've already installed it on my laptop, so let's open it up and take a look. Jumping into the environment, the Automator dashboard is divided into three main parts. In the center is the workspace. This is where you place and connect your nodes to create flows. The workspace is organized by tabs. Each tab is called a flow. A single series of connected nodes is also informally called a flow. On the left is the palette. The palette offers a rich library of nodes that represent various functions, devices, and services that can be integrated into your application. If the node palette is not visible on the left of the screen, click the hamburger in the upper right of the screen, select View, and check the box for Show Palette. You can also use the shortcut Ctrl-P to toggle the palette. On the right side of the screen is the sidebar. We'll take a look at some of the sidebar features as we create our first flow. If the sidebar is not visible, you click the hamburger menu in the upper right, then View, then Show Sidebar. You can also use the shortcut Control Space to toggle the sidebar. To use Muse Automator to create a program that runs on your Muse hardware, simply drag and drop nodes onto the workspace, where you link them together to create a sequence of steps that perform the action you are trying to achieve. Let's take a look at the hardware I'll be working with today. I have a Muse MU1300 controller, a Varia SL50 touch panel, and a Universal Control Extender Box, the CERL8. They're all connected to a network switch, as is this laptop, which is running the Muse Automator software. To learn how to connect devices to your Muse controller, be sure to watch our other TechBytes tutorial video. You can find the link for that video in the description below. Let's start with a blank workspace. Currently, I have a project open, and there are actions visible in the flow. If we drop down the hamburger menu, you may notice the absence of traditional file menu options, such as Save or Save As. Instead, we'll select the Projects submenu. If your version of Muse Automator doesn't have the Project submenu, you'll need to install an additional plugin. You should pause here and install GitHub Desktop. I've included the link to GitHub in the description of this video. Now in the Projects menu, I'll select New. In the pop-up window, I'll make sure Create Project is selected. I need to give the project a name. I'll name mine Tech Bytes Demo, using underscores for the spaces. The description is optional, and for this demo, I won't add anything here. Next, I need to name the JSON file that will be created with this new project, or I can just leave the default name of flow.json. I'm going to keep the default this time. I need to decide whether to enable encryption for this project. Make note, if you intend to store the project in a public Git repository, it must be encrypted. I don't plan on this, so for this demo, I'll disable encryption. Finally, click on Create Project. Our new project has now been created, and we're ready to begin building our flows. The AMX Muse Automator nodes are listed at the top of the node palette. The first thing I must do is select and add the controller node onto my workspace. Notice this particular node doesn't have any handles to connect it to other nodes. The reason is because this is only needed for context. I have to tell Node-RED how to connect to our Muse Automation Controller. Double-clicking on the Controller node opens the Edit Node dialog. You can change the name of the controller if you wish. In my case, I'll call it MU1300. Next, I'll need to enter its connection information. I'll add its IP address. I also need to put in the credentials to successfully log into the controller. Now I'll click the Connect button. You can see that after the device connects, 
the providers and devices boxes populate with the current configuration of the controller. We can now hit the Done button. Now that we've added our controller node, let's look at the Deploy and Sync menu options. Starting with the Deploy menu, your options are 1. To do a full deploy of everything in your workspace. 2. You can deploy only the modified flows. Or 3. You can deploy just the modified nodes themselves. Being able to selectively deploy only modified flows or nodes is a powerful feature of Automator. For example, if you have a multi-room project and you've organized each room on a separate flow, you can update one room without affecting the other rooms which may be in use. So what happens when you hit Deploy? In this case, it activates the current nodes and flows. That is, the program is now running. Notice the connection information appear beneath the controller node, and it's green, indicating it's currently connected. You're now able to test and debug any flows in your project. Be aware that the program is now running under a local instance of Node-RED hosted on your computer. It has not been sent to the Muse hardware. Since the program is running on your computer, if you close the Automator application, the program will stop running. In order to send the flows to the Node-RED engine hosted on the Muse hardware, we need to use the Sync button. Once you sync the project, you can close the Automator application on your computer, and the program will continue to run on the Muse hardware. Let's continue. I've created a simple touch panel file in AMX's Touch Panel Design 5 software and loaded it to my Varia SL50. I'll open a VNC application to show you what my panel looks like. It's a simple touch panel with buttons for Relay Close, Relay Open, and Relay Toggle. It also has indicators for the actual state of the relays. Like the controller node, I'll need to add a control panel node onto my workspace for context. Double-click it to open its properties. I'm going to name the panel Varia SL50. In the drop-down box, I'll pick the device. In this case, it's Testroom Varia TP. I want to point out all the devices in this list are being read directly from the connected Muse controller. Only devices that were previously added in the Muse controller's web page will appear in this list. An earlier video in this series explains the process. You can find a link to the video, Adding Devices in Muse Controllers, in the description below. Next, I need to load the actual TP design file into this control panel node so it is aware of all the various pages and buttons that exist on the panel. I'll use the Browse button to find the Touch Panel Design panel file, and I'll select it. You can see the panel pages populate once you select a TPD5 file. Once again, I'll click on Deploy. Now that we've created the context for our hardware, and we've learned about deploying and syncing our projects, we're ready to create our first flows. Join us in part two of this video, where we'll continue this project.